Is that it, Matt? Did I miss anything? Yeah. Uh, I, I do think the first time I was introduced to the idea, the concept of a fatigue shooter isn't going to learn anything is from you. And that well, they're was... not. well, they're not. No, they're not. But yeah, having just gone through smaller, little tiny courses, law enforcement stuff, that's never anything discussed. Well, no, I mean, because we're really talking about performance and, and truly trying to learn. It just makes sense. I mean, we could we could do another modcast sometime. We'd get deeper into that, but you know, there, there's a whole science to how people. I mean, I kind of covered it, but there's a whole science to how people learn shit. Mm-hmm. And as an instructor, and as an agency or a unit or whatever, you know, this kind of applies to Rick too. You know, you, you have to know. I mean, Rick was kind of talking about it earlier with NCOs. You know, an NCO is stuck in his ways. You know, you want to have better NCOs, introduce them to cognitive sciences. You know, I want to make, and here's the thing. I mean, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but you can flatten learning curves out greatly just by understanding how people acquire information. Okay, let me ask you a question, you guys, the, the two people that are left. <laughs> you know, what's the average attention span of a human adult, all things being good? You got enough sleep, you ate well, you had enough coffee, you got laid, whatever. What's the average attention span of a human adult? Seven minutes. No, I mean, when you're actually focusing, I mean, when you're actually focusing on something, it's about a half an hour, give or take. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, what, what were you saying? Well, I mean, no, seven, that was a joke. yeah, I mean, but if, if, if you're interested in the topic, yeah. So Rick, Rick is teaching, you know, basic ballistics and these guys are alpha males and they're all on board with the program and they're focusing and they're taking notes and they've got their dip in they have their coffee or their rip in or their fucking monster they're they're there right they're 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 there intellectually about half an hour so if you're in a college class Matt you're in college watch mm-hmm. the students at the half an hour mark and see if they're looking at their watch or they're looking at the wall clock that's about when they tend to drift off that's when they lose their focus so as an instructor if you're smart you don't do any block of instruction more than 30 minutes because that's just general when people lose their attention span, right? You build all of what you do around 30 minute blocks and you give them a small five, 10 minute break, you know, and it can be an instructive break. You can say, Hey, we're working on this while you're taking your piss break and your coffee break. Anybody that wants to stick around, we can talk about stuff or, Hey, you know, make notes or whatever, but you have to give them that mental pause in order for them to uh, process the information just through at them. Right. So, yeah. You know, Rick going, we're talking about Rick and his guys, you know, as, as a good NCO, if you want to flatten the learning curve, if you understand how cognitive acquisition actually works, when you're building your POI, right, you will be able to get guys more on board with things and they'll, they'll absorb more information more quickly as opposed to doing a death by PowerPoint for two and a half hours on ballistics you break it into 30 minute blocks and give them coffee and pee breaks, let them come back and then go over and review what you previously introduced in the 30 minute block a little bit. This is the grouping thing. And then go on to the next topic. Hey, remember when we talked about it in the first thing before your pee break, we we're talking about, you know, these how ballistics work. You know, this is what happens when you shoot M855 through an M4, you know, Here's basic ballistics. Now let's talk about what happens when you shoot at a further distance, M855 through M4. You know, this is, we're still covering the same ballistic concepts, but we're going to introduce distance, right? So you're reinforcing the first block with the second thing. We've kind of talked about this previously, but, you know, if, if as an instructor, if you get in there and do your own work, just like a student, as an instructor, you have to be a student, you know, you can flatten that learning curve out. You know, you, does that make sense, Rick? No, absolutely. I, I do try to do that. Um, and, and I didn't even really think about the 30-minute uh, time, but it, it just tends to be about how, how it is. And, uh, you know, when you, you start seeing guys that, you know, drifting a little bit, you know, just being able to read them and saying, hey, all right, you know, we, we need to get up, let's take a, take a piss break. And then later on when we're – you know, applying it on like the practical exercise, whether it's, you know, being on, on the range shooting or something like that. And you see the light bulbs that go on and they're like, Oh, all right. Like, all right, cool. So we're starting to learn this and, uh, and now we can start building on the next lesson and, and, you know, furthering that. 
Well, I mean, and then let me say something in addition to that. So you're on the line, you've got your, your kids doing sniper stuff, and you see that they're not fatigued and they're still focused. You don't have to, you don't have to stop at 30 minutes. They're still, they're still a captive audience. You know, they're still pro- their gears are still working. So you can push a little bit longer. That's a, a good instructor can fucking look at a class and say, hell, fuck, I can do another, you know, in my grouping, I can do another repetition of malfunction clearance drills because these guys aren't fucking drifting, right? But that's hard. That, and, and let me tell you, that takes a lot of time as an instructor, you know? There are guys that hang their shingle out, oh, I was, you know, an OIF and I did this at, you know, wherever, and I know what the fuck I'm doing. That's great. Merry Christmas, you know? <laughs> but you don't know how to yes. fucking teach yet. You you haven't mentored under somebody. I had two phenomenal mentors, Bill and Pat. You know, Bill taught me the LE side and how to be a good instructor, how to develop a lesson plan, how to test people, how to develop metrics, how to communicate. And then Pat Pat taught me all the other stuff. I mean, Pat didn't let me run a line for a long time. And then he finally was like, yeah, go ahead and, I'm going to take a break or I'm going to shoot the line or whatever. Fucking run this thing. Because he trusted me. But I, I fucked up when I started. I was nervous. I stammered. I didn't have a vocal presence. I had no command voice. I had no um, individuality. You know, <laughs> I parroted Pat a lot. And then I deviated from that because I got confidence. That takes time under good instructors. And then from then on, Mr. Grumpy was born. Well, I, I was only grumpy when I'd go to a fucking range and it wasn't prepared like that was supposed to be. Went to this place in Ohio one time, freezing our balls off, you know, shitty weather. And they'd had a competition the day before and they had all this fucking steel on our fucking range. And the guy that was supposed to move it with the fucking forklift tractor fucking implement wasn't around. You know, and they didn't have and they didn't have the fucking targetry stands. They didn't have the fucking you know, fucking last. They didn't have the fucking backers. And so I had to fucking construct a range out of nothing out of the back of my truck. It took me five fucking hours. Pat was done with lunch and still doing fucking lectures. And I still didn't have the range up on TD1, you know? And that's why I got grumpy. Or, you know, we're supposed to shoot on this range and we get we get set up on a range that's fucking like shooting on the moon. It was like a lunar surface uphill, you know, 15, 15% incline. Can't fucking shoot on that range. You have to work around that shit. You know, anyway, that's why I was grumpy. Not because of the students, just because of fucking range shit. Now it was, it was cool when we figured out, Hey, that Mike guy, he's, he's actually really cool. I just need to talk to him. Don't, don't be scared. Well, I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm a pussy cat, dude. Oh no, I know that. I know I'm, that. I'm I'm, a, I'm so I'm actually so laid back on the range. It's not even funny, you know. Anyway, yeah. So Rick, I mean, you know, thirty minute blocks work. You know, read the read the read the atmosphere of the class or the focus of the class, and just kind of adjust a little bit one way or the other. And you know, you'll be fine. I mean, I know you know this, but a lot a lot of guys that work in your area, you know, big green, not necessarily individualized things like sniper. Um, you know, they just want to get through the guys through the package so they can get guys safe and so they don't shoot each other. And that's all they want to teach. They don't want to fine tune things, you know? Yeah, no, I hate that. I hate that. Yeah. But I mean, look, I mean, I, I did a package with Pat at Pendleton and we had, Mr. Grumpy, right? So <laughs> they didn't have enough fucking target stands. So I fucking out of two by fours and screws and shit, I built a fucking mock up. And I said, this is how you do it dimensions, number of screws, how much lump. I mean, I gave them all the shit where they needed, right? And Freddie, Freddie Bush can fucking, you know, verify this shit. So we get out there in the first day. And there are no fucking built target stands, right? And so how the fuck are we going to teach a class without target stands? You can't do it. It's just not going to fucking happen. So we worked it out. I mean, we had to fucking, you know, 
as this as the people from New Zealand, the Kiwis say, we souvenired some fucking target stands from nearby ranges. We had a working party, fucking go steal some shit. But um, you know, it, it turned out to be a big pain in the ass. And the working with um the Marine Corps, it could be the army, it could be it doesn't matter. Um you know, you get out there and you have this huge fucking group of students and you have a cadre of instructors and you have to be able to figure out how to do what you need to do within a certain time frame, regardless of the obstacles. Some people can't fucking do that. So, you know, Rick, all kudos to you. I mean, you get it, but a lot of people in the larger institution that you're working in, they don't fucking grasp the concept of what they need to do to get their guys spun up. They just don't get it. Yep, it's true. Meckley, you want to say anything? No, <clears throat> I mean, I'm in that, uh, I think I did like, uh, and I can do a better one. That's a little bit more, uh, free when I'm home, but, uh, that one of the videos for, uh, 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 Miller with the, you know, just going over basics of tack reload and speed reload, loading an M4, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I did like six cuts in the video and I wasn't even happy with it just cause I'm, I'm still at that, that kind of stage where it, it it's a difference of standing up in, in front of your peers and, and teaching them something is a little easier cause you, you can, you can read that crowd. You understand that crowd's little tells but then doing it to an unknown audience uh, or people you do not know at all is kind of uh, daunting at first, especially when you're really trying to not sound like an idiot. Yeah. But I mean, I, I you know, I use myself as, as an example. I mean, you're going to suck when you first start and hopefully you have a mentor. I mean, so Rick Scott, you know, he's a good instructor for what he does and he's got some young stud underneath him who's going to be a good instructor and you have to, you have to lead him down the path. You have to be a mentor or a guru to him and say, Hey, look, this is what I do. Watch me. Okay. And then you see that he's paying attention. He understands what you're ta- understands what you're talking about. And then, you know, six months later, you're like, Hey, I want you to teach this block of instruction. You know, and you, you hover on his shoulder a little bit like an angel and you're like, Hey, that was pretty good. But next time try it this way, or you're too quiet or Hey, you missed this point. Let's cover that on the lunch break. Right. That's a good, that's a good mentor. That's a good instructor, instructor, instructor of instructors, you know, and it's hard, you know, when you're with your peers, you know, when you're, when you're out there with your snipers, that's great, Rick, but teach something to non snipers that sniper, you know, applicable, you know, you're not used to that crowd and you might be tenuous and uncomfortable. That's how you grow. That's that stressor we're talking about. That's getting outside your comfort zone. That's how you grow. You know, you're in primary and secondary and this is, you think it's stale. Well, go look someplace else, acquire a different skill set. Hey, you're great running a pistol. Merry Christmas. How are you putting on a tourniquet? Have you done that yet? That might apply, you know, or how about you're great at running your carbine, but you suck at transition from carbine to pistol. Maybe you should work on that. There's, there's no reason anybody that's acquiring knowledge should ever be stale. It's it's un, it's inexcusable. It's not acceptable. Well, that and uh, kind of to parody what uh, Mike was saying. The the one thing I noticed, at least as a personal development aspect of myself, that was a big shift um, when I was in the military. Was uh, so you know for a while. I had some good NCOs and I had some bad ones, um, but for the most part, a lot of them were that. Um, micromanaging type where, you know, I'm like, you know, that I'm a peacock out of let me fly kind of guy. Like if, if you don't give me that confidence and that trust, I just kind of shut down. I'm like, okay, you know, fuck you then. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to, to work to that next level because my, my work's going to fall on deaf ears. Um, but the, the big shift was when a, 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 who's a friend of mine now, and he's out, uh, came from group and then took over our section. He, he was the guy coming to me cause he, he'd been to Sodic like many moons ago. And, and a lot of that was kind of fuzzy. Uh, he was the guy coming to me for advice and for 
you know, technical knowledge because I was up to date on all that stuff. <clears throat> having somebody, especially for your subordinates, um, having somebody place a little bit of trust and confidence in somebody can can have a huge net benefit, especially if they're, you know, like myself, where I'm more of a naturally introverted kind of guy. Shocker. Um, but if you see that kind of a guy kind of withdrawing into his shell, give him something to do. And, and it show that you've got that kind of trust in his ability. And sometimes you'd be surprised, man. Like that that can have it just as much of a, a positive effect as you know, correcting a, the type A guy and making, you know, making him kind of use his personality against him to get him to do what you want. So, Rick, how do you deal with that? Uh, I, I, I mean, shit, just by nature, I have to delegate a lot uh, because of a couple of different hats that I got to wear. And um, just currently, uh, because uh, we, we don't have any sniper employment uh, NCOs, sniper employment officers. So I'm kind of kind of wearing three hats right now, and I'm possibly getting ready to wear a fourth. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, having my, my team leaders um, running training and, and, you know, just giving them that, that long leash to uh, you know, do things that, you know, they, uh, they should be able to do, but it, it's – I see the confidence inspired in them when I do that and say, Hey, you know, you guys know how to run this. Uh, just, this is what I need. My, my two end goals for this is this. And I need the guys to do this by such and such time, man. You know, I know you guys got it. Um, if you run into any snags, let me know. If it's something that like needs to get pushed up, let me know. I got to be over here doing this or putting this fire out. And, and that's how, how guys learn. I've, I've seen just over the time that I've, been the section leader um growth in my my three team leaders and uh i i i do feel that like i i, I wish i had more more time i always wish i had more time but um developing my team leaders getting them ready to be section leaders themselves is something that like lately i've I really tried to buckle down on and stuff because uh, uh when i first got to this section we were we were really low on qualified personnel and uh so uh, the the emphasis that that I had decided I wanted to go with it was a section was all right getting our our uh, our Joes our E four below guys uh, qualified up and then uh, you know once we get that that baseline of knowledge going uh, trying to trying to develop the team leaders at the same time but but then really focusing on the team leaders you know and it it's a cyclical thing you know I, there's there's never a time where we're all right we're good enough uh, we we can stop training now or stop you know, pushing, but, um, I'm starting to try to transition to that point where I can, I can kind of start focusing a lot more on, on the team leaders and letting the team leaders train their guys up because we're, we're getting, we're starting to get ahead of the, of, of the curve in, in terms of being, uh, having sniper school qualified personnel, which is really good. I'm proud as fuck of the guys. And, you know, they just, they've, they've been doing great things. And, um, but yeah, it, it, it Subordinate development, you know, um, professional development is is an ongoing thing always. So, and, and again, it goes back to what we're talking about: these plateaus that we're trying to uh, trying to break through. You know, um, just I, I want these guys to be a better section leader than I ever was, and I'm just trying to like give them the tools that they can they can take and just you know expand on and run with, and, and you know, hopefully, uh, if everything works out, that that'll be the, uh, the end state once I'm done with my time in the section, which I'm a claw. I'm a, I'm a, they're going to claw me, you know, pull me away, kicking, screaming and clawing <laughs> from the job. But, you know, at the same time, uh, you know, I, I look at, I look at my subordinate team leaders and I'm like, man, these guys are going to do good things. So, you know, when I become old and irrelevant, I'm going to get my ass out of the way. Yeah. You're not going to be relevant 